Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by, by Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. Hi everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik, and we've got an exciting show in store for you this week. We'll take you over to Sheboygan and hop aboard a glass bottom boat for a tour with Captain Jen. She and her family started the Nautical North Family Adventures Glass Bottom Shipwreck Boat Tour there. You won't want to miss that. We had a great time out there. And Jimmy and Jordan have some other excitement in store for us this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a couple more stories on this week's show. We're gonna kick things off with really the start of the hunting seasons here in Michigan. Again, last week was the early goose opener. You won't want to miss that story. And we're also going to give you an update on kind of what's going on with Asian carp and why it's so important that we keep those out of the Great Lakes. A really good story there. So lots of brand new stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. What a beautiful day in the woods. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By Green Mark Equipment. Green Mark Equipment is a John Deere dealership network in southwest Michigan and northern Indiana. Green Mark provides sales and services to farmers, commercial businesses, large property owners, and homeowners. Information about pricing and products available can be found online at greenmarkequipment.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. This moment brought to you by DTE's Clean Vision. Well, for the last week we've been watching it, and there's probably been three to four hundred birds in it, and kind of getting a little scattered now so we're gonna hunt it now before they want to jump ship and get set up where they've been, most traffic's been going through try to get them to land and blast, blast them well hey everybody uh, it is the opening day of the early goose season I'm on the top of a little hill here uh, and some wheat stubble and down near Hastings and it is a beautiful night, although it is about 85, maybe even close to 90 degrees. And uh, hunting with a buddy and some of his friends. And they've been having birds come in here. It's almost 6 o'clock right now. We're just getting set up. Um, the birds have been, uh, actually last night they were in here at 745. And shooting hours is 812. So we should have, hopefully, at least a half hour of good shooting. Uh, we'll see what happens. But we're uh, just getting all the blinds uh, kind of roughed in. And uh, guys are walking out right now to spread some decoys and fingers crossed, hopefully it goes well. The early goose opener always feels like the first day of fall to me, but today in Barry County it felt like the middle of summer with the hot temperatures. But it's the opener and you gotta go. All right, tell me what's the plan with the decoys here, young fella. All right, normally you gotta play the wind. And tonight the wind is coming out of the south 
west. Okay. So usually the birds, if it's a heavy wind, they'll tend to lock in and try to go into the wind. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is get it set up. We don't want the birds going any farther to the, to the right of us. We kind of want to keep them right in front. So what we try to do is just build a pattern with the decoys so they'll kind of fall right in, right in front of the blind. So okay. that's the ticket. That's the, that's the method of the madness. Yes, method of the madness. <laughs> if it doesn't work, hopefully get the first flock, try it out if they don't like it. Go out, switch some things up. Gotcha. See if we can come up with something better. Game time. Pretty much on cue, the birds arrived as the sun started to go down. Once the birds started coming in, it was pretty much a steady flow of action. Some were landing out of range, and many pouring into a field about a quarter mile behind us. got hot and heavy really quick. They all came all at once and the first few flocks we did really good and dumped them and we couldn't get out to get the bodies. I think that's what flared a lot of them over across the road but we got permission to hunt them tomorrow morning so hopefully we can jump across the road and have the same thing happen that did tonight. And How many birds did we have there you figured? That was a lot. Be, being nice probably 300. Wow. And came at once. That's what happens. They didn't come in their easy 20s and but is what it is. So we had four or five that we knocked down, but lots that were in the air. So we hoped that the birds may just come back to the field they were in the night before. So first thing in the morning, we moved our spot and hoped for the best. Good morning. A bunch of them came in here last night. You know, we were set up in the buddy's field next door. And this is where they were last night then, right? Yeah, yeah, that's where they came in last night. We took a couple volleys and then probably a couple hundred birds came right behind them and too much going on over there, so they all landed over here. Should be a good morning. <laughs> Some of the best parts of this kind of hunting is the banter of the guys, especially when someone falls asleep. Another great part is when the birds, well, when the birds are headed your way. Overall, we had a great day and a good start to the hunting seasons. It went pretty good. Um, I don't know. We 
felt like we could have had more. I felt like we should have set up a little bit farther to the south here that it got daylight. But uh, we had a couple big groups that were real high and they kind of flared off on us. But the ones that were a little low, um, they did exactly what we needed them to do, come right in front of us and had some good shooting. So uh, the decoy spread was similar to what we did last night. We had it wide over to our right and then a little shallow on our left. So we bring them right, right straight in front of the blind. So it did work, but some of the bigger groups that flew high, um, they were on us. And uh, I don't know if it was just the, the blinds were a little humped up or something, but they just uh, went a different direction. So, With about a dozen birds to show for our two hunts, we packed up the blinds and the guys started to think about when they could get together again. Early goose can be slow till the crops come off, but hard to find a better way to spend a morning right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, in our next story on this week's show, we're going to do kind of a deep dive about Asian carp. We're going to sit and talk with several different entities around the state of Michigan talking about the importance of keeping Asian carp out of our Great Lakes. So two years ago, we traveled from northern Michigan all the way down to Tennessee to find out what was at risk from invasive carp they were to get into the Great Lakes, as well as what are they already doing in the waters that they've inhabited. At the time, we were really trying to make sure that we got one of the best solutions for keeping them out of the Great Lakes, the Brandon Road Lock and Dam, funded and approved by Congress. And that was part of our purpose in, in creating Against the Current. Now we're back here, and a lot's happened just in those last two years. For one, Congress has approved the Brandon Road Lock and Dam plan. We've got funding going toward it, but yet we're still a long ways away from that plan being completed and we need to keep the pressure up to make sure that we keep invasive carp out of the Great Lakes. So what we're doing right now is we're revisiting some of the, the places where the scientific studies say that they're most likely to impact if they get into the Great Lakes and we want to highlight the tremendous diversity of the fishing opportunities that we have here in Michigan and why it's so important to keep invasive carp out of the Great Lakes. Right now we're down in the bayous of Spring Lake, um, which is connected to the Grand River, which is connected to Lake Michigan. Um, and so we're in the most productive waters from a biodiversity standpoint for the Grand River system, being down in the bayous and in the deltas. Um, so we've got everything in here from your panfish for bluegill, uh, crappie, bass, pike, muskie, catfish, gar, so it's highly diversified fishery, not to mention the biomass that's down in here with, you know, all your, you know, forage fish and creatures and insects and all of that stuff. There we go. Oh, it's a pike. Nice. I got the net. Oh, yeah. Look at you. Good one. Good one. Good one. Good one. We'll get them over, get them in the, keep them in the water here, man. We'll okay. keep them in the water. There we go. All right. If we were to get invasive carp into Lake Michigan and then into the Grand River system, particularly down here, it would devastate um, the recreational fishery around here. I'm a fishing guide. I make my living off of the fishery. And it is important that these fisheries maintain their health, which includes uh, not only water quality, but also from an invasive species standpoint particularly the invasive carp. If they get in here, there's no way to eradicate these carp and we'll have lost a, a fantastic urban and suburban fishery, which a lot of people use. That's a mouthful. In 2019, Michigan United Conservation Clubs commissioned a study with Michigan State University to assess the impact of hunters and anglers on the economy here in Michigan. And the results were tremendous. $2.3 billion is generated just by anglers here in our state. That's not just purchasing licenses. That's 1.1 million anglers buying tackle, bait, gear, boats, and hotel nights all around the state. 
That economic impact is truly an asset to our state and it is also what is most at risk with the threat of invasive carp. Michigan enjoys some of the mo world's most iconic and diverse sport fishing opportunities. So if invasive carp invade the Great Lakes system, what we're going to find are, are threats primarily in two categories. One is invasive carp are going to compete with native fish species, native sport fish species for food sources, and they're also going to significantly disrupt uh, habitat that's critical for all the life cycles of all of our sport fish. So when invasive carp get into the Great Lakes system, we're going to see those impacts kind of twofold pinching down on our native sport fishery, outcompeting them both for food and disrupting the habitat that they depend upon. A couple weeks ago, we were with Tom Workman over in Grand Haven, and we were on Spring Lake, which is one of the bayous connected to the Grand River. And part of the reason we chose that is there's a 2017 USGS study about food availability within the Great Lakes, where they were looking at you know, is there actually enough food for them? Have you studied the type of food and habitat that that provides, or has yours been more modeling on like Saginaw Bay, Lake Erie? Well, we, we you know we took a look at Lake Michigan, at, you know, Lake Michigan model and, and Lake Huron also. Um, so, so again, you know, Lake Huron, Maine Basin, um, Lake Michigan, Maine Basin, uh, very oligotrophic or nutrient poor. Um, you know, some debate on you know, suitability for invasive carp. Um, you know, how much habitat, how much food availability. But again, you have that, that near shore, littoral, riparian zone. That is going to be shallower, warmer, a little bit more productive. Um, and you know, I, I believe it'd be a perfect you know, avenue for them to, to get in and spread. Carp are in that rare sort of category where we don't have, uh, we don't have invasive carp in the Great Lakes yet. And that's why we need to be absolutely focused on keeping them from getting here because once they get here very difficult problem to manage so with invasive species you know an ounce of prevent prevention is worth a pound of cure and we always want to be in that position of trying to prevent the next invasive look over the horizon and that's what we've been doing with invasive carp. This is what we're after good eater fish very important ecologically economically here part of a hundred million dollar a walleye fishery in Lake Erie. So yeah, this is what it's all about right here. You know, Lake Erie, it, it's, it's, it's uh, unfortunately be great habitat for, uh, for invasive carp. We mentioned that planktivores uh, are gonna be outcompeted by, could be possibly outcompeted by invasive carp. So here in, in, in uh, Lake Erie, you're talking about gizzard chat, which is one of the primary forage of walleye. In uh, Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, you talk about uh, planktivores being alewife and bloaters. Again, prey species for Chinook salmon and, and lake trout and, and, and other fish. So again, even though there's not a direct competition with those fish, you're still gonna have food web impacts that will eventually affect different um, life stages of those fish. Third species, another planktivore. Um, one of the fish that was in the, the, the models uh, the, for food web interactions. Um, one of the fish species that are important ecologically and economically here um, that will be affected by, uh, you know, invasive uh, carp getting into the system. A lot of people like come out and eat them. There's a huge fishery for these on the river. You go up there right now and most of the people on the river now are fishing for white bass. So again, fish will be impacted would affect, uh, you know, people eat. People in the city of Detroit actually will load up on these things this time of year. So if these fish were become scarce, are harder to catch as a result of you know food web interactions. Um, this could actually affect the survival of people who depend on these fish. Michigan's been very involved in uh, working with the Army Corps of Engineers, the state of Illinois, the United States Congress, and our partner states from across the Great Lakes Basin to try and get us to a point where we actually have a barrier that's going to prevent carp from moving up from uh, the state of Illinois and getting into the Great Lakes. Where Michigan has been a very significant partner is that uh, it's a very expensive project for uh, the state of Illinois to do on their own. And so Michigan's been able to marshal uh, financial, financial resources to bring to the table that helped coalesce the Corps of Engineers and the state of Illinois around a common vision and a common project. And Michigan's had a seat at that table. Great Lakes have a world-class fishery, from smallmouth and largemouth bass, trout, salmon, we have it all here, and that's what's at stake. 
and invasive carp are a threat to this value we have here in the Great Lakes. We have a project right now, the Brandon Road Lock and Dam, that has made tremendous progress in the past two years. Congress has stepped up, fully authorized the project. The state of Illinois, state of Michigan, and the Corps of Engineers have come together with a design agreement that is currently underway that's gonna design this project, not for just our kids today, but for our future generations. I wonder what's that. <laughs> Great day on the water. We've all heard the stories of some of those shipwrecks that have happened here on the Great Lakes. Now there's one perfect way to check those out from the safety of a boat, and that's a glass bottom boat tour. Nautical North Family Adventures in downtown Sheboygan has only been around for four summers now, but it's become a must-see while visiting the northern lower peninsula. Captain Jen Dowker and her sons started the tour boat business in a pretty unique way. So my three boys and I wrote the business plan as part of a homeschool business assignment. Uh, 38 pages later, we pitched it to Invest Sheboygan and did not end up winning that, but did end up with a private investor who offered to give us the funds that we need to, needed to get the loan. I love the water and I love sharing this area with people from all over. It's just a real blessing. So I've driven a boat since I was about three years old. <laughs> so I've, I've been driving boats for a long time um, and, I, and I've loved the water. Um, I took a 10 day class and got some hours on different boats as well and then applied to the US Coast Guard for the pilot's license and now I have a 50 ton license. I'm actually living the dream. Like this is exactly where I was meant to be and I think that reflects in the business. Everybody really has a good time out there. So I was born and raised right here in the tip of the mint. So this is my first love and it's truly my pleasure to share this area with other people. It's a, a different vibe here. It's just calm, relaxed, fun. It's beautiful. The Sheboygan area is definitely a one-of-a-kind experience. Today we boarded the two o'clock cruise with Captain Jen and her crew to check out a few shipwrecks. So we start right here at the dock at port. We spin around and head out to Lake Huron, go under the State Street Bridge that they lift up for us. Um, we talk about the history of the entire waterway system, the lighthouses that we encounter along the way. Once we pass the break wall, we talk about all the geography in the area out on the lake and then head out around the 14-foot Shoal Lighthouse and in over three shallow water shipwrecks in Duncan Bay. Our shipwrecks that we, we see daily are the Genesee Chief, the Leviathan, and the Jenny Lynn. Everyone aboard the Yankee Sunshine has a front row seat to view the shipwrecks through the glass bottom windows. Shipwreck tours are just one of several different cruises that Captain Jen offers. So we also offer an occasional river cruise where we go through the Sheboygan Lock and Dam system. We get to experience the lift of 16 feet and then out part of the inland waterway to the Black River and then back. We do have another boat in our business that is a 28-foot Baja that we take out for scuba charters for some of our local wrecks that are 60 to all the way up to 180 feet deep. We do also in-depth private lighthouse cruises on that vessel. Uh, all the way out to Spectacle Reef Light, even if they want to, so. The shipwrecks here just off the shores of Sheboygan are incredible to see. Unlike shipwrecks in the ocean, these wrecks are preserved in the fresh water of Lake Huron and are in great condition. On this particular cruise, guests get even closer to these relics. So on the two o'clock cruise, it's really special because we allow people to go snorkeling over an 1891 shipwreck. If they just want to swim, they can swim. If they'd like to snorkel, they can snorkel, but they get to see all kinds of neat things like fish and cannons. <laughs> Captain Jen has been known to embellish some of her stories and even places a couple of more interesting items near the shipwrecks for a good laugh. Visitors and locals alike just love Jen's tales and have really embraced her cruise business. This community has been amazing. There is so much support here for this business and it's just good. I think everybody's really happy to get uh, visitors out on the water and have something for their family to do when they come and visit and so yeah we try to be as accommodating and as 
informative as we can be out on the trips and we make sure everybody has an excellent time out there. So, Captain Jen treats everyone like family out here. Every youngster gets a chance to drive the boat, every question is answered, and lots of laughs are had along the way. Running a tour boat business is a lot of fun with a lot of long days. So we go out seven days a week, five times a day on this boat. <laughs> 10, 12, 2, 5 and sunset. And on the two o'clock trip, it's one of our most special ones because we allow snorkeling over an 1891 shipwreck. Let everybody get off the water snorkeling or swimming. So I shoot for May 1st to October 31st, but here in Northern Michigan, it's just a, a toss of the dice. This year, we were actually able to start on April 29th, oddly enough, <laughs> and with a private charter from a group from uh, Grand Rapids, which was pretty neat. Um, my goal is October 31st. Usually if the winds pick up in the fall, we have to we have to cut it for the season, but we just go as long as we can. I live 15 minutes from my boat. If you want to come for a ride, just call. If you haven't seen Sheboygan's pristine waters, sunken treasures, and breathtaking views, it's high time you made your way to this little slice of heaven right here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you stay tuned in upcoming weeks. Hunting seasons are finally here. We'll be heading out to the woods with the cameras rolling for the Liberty Hunt and then small game season starts. All sorts of great fall adventures headed your way. If you'd like to see where we are and where we're headed next, you can always check us out online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a good way to kind of keep track of us. You can do that through our website, our different social media platforms, as well as YouTube. So lots of places you could be checking us out. Make sure you are joining us over the next several weeks. We are really excited to get out into the woods as the hunting seasons kick off. What a great time to be a sportsman here in the state of Michigan. If we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. White-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man